Hey guys, uh, I was gonna, today I was going to show you uh, my homemade, one of my homemade rifles. Uh, this is a 6mm .223, which is just a .223 necked up to 6mm. Um, as you can tell, it's a, it's a, it's a single shot rifle, has one heck of a scope on it. That's a Lyman 20 power scope. Um, I, I did not obviously make the scope or the scope rings. Uh, I did modify a scope mount to fit on it. Um, and of course the bipod I didn't make and the, and the little bipod studs. Uh, but everything else uh, I made, um, it's, a, it's a single shot rifle. Um, there's no ejector. There is an extractor on here. Hoping I can get a better look in here. Um, I made the bolt, the receiver, the firing pin, all the trigger mechanism. There's the extractor right there. Um, the barrel is a shilling uh, barrel blank. It is a one in 10 twist, which is what you'd want for a six millimeter 223. And like I said, that's a honk in 1970s. A Lyman fixed 20 power uh, scope. A um, little bit more about it. Uh, it it's cockling open, but I'll take it apart at some point at the end of the video and you can see how it all works. Uh, the, the stock is uh, it's walnut with a, with a, I think that's a cherry end cap. There's a Packmire ground to fit butt pad you can find those on brown owls or midway there's a little bit of a linseed finish on it um let's see a little more else about it uh it's, it's a dang accurate rifle that's probably the most accurate one i've ever built um i've, I've taken it out to 600 yards i got some uh, 10 11 inch groups out of 600 yards um it's got an 18 inch barrel i did crown it it was just a round blank uh, i cut you know cut the profile i wanted put the, put threads on it for the receiver to mount in and of course chambered it in the six millimeter 223 which is also known as the i believe it's a six by 45 millimeter uh, just another another word for it. It, it it's a little bit of a wildcat uh this gun does love 70 grain bullets there about but it does have a, a very nice um, trigger pull of course it, i did check it it is it is empty uh, and it's cock, cock on open so you would there's no ejector you have to pull your own brass out get a little bit more on the lines of it the stock it's based off of winchester uh, model 70 blueprints you can find i think i bought it off midway um i mean it's 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 not an exact copy i actually think i kind of undercut it right here too much um but man i've made well over a dozen guns and this is my most accurate one but we'll take it to the range and uh after that we'll take it apart show you how it works and uh, put it back together. All right. This, this wasn't from that day, but this is the best group I've ever shot with that gun. Uh, it's about a sixteenth of an inch. This is 100 yards, a uh, five-shot group. And here's uh, 600 yards. This is on those electronic targets. It's about a 10 or 11-inch group. So, uh, pretty accurate rifle. Hey, guys. So, uh, 
to take it apart, first thing we do is there's a uh, screw right here, so I'll take that out, and it should take the stock off. Now that I got the stock off, you can see uh, the inletting in here. Uh, I sunk a washer deep down in there in the wood for the trigger guard. You can see a little nut there for that one. So I, I put a, on my wood, wood lathe, I put a dial in there. To top that off, that way, you know, the trigger guard's pretty firmly attached. Uh, you can see all the cutouts for the different parts of the of the action. Um, of course, that's for the swing sl uh, swivel stud that the bipod mounts to. But that's about it for the stock. Um, like I said, just one screw holds it together. Uh, you know, it's not a lot of recoil. Probably most people would use two. I, I would probably use two if I built the gun today. I built this several years ago. So the next next step uh, to dismantling this gun is we'll take the trigger group off. There's just a screw in the back, screw in the front. Um, if I was going to build that gun today, uh, I, I would definitely put some some set screws to stop these screws from backing out because you don't want the trigger group coming off. You'll see how the how the trigger works when we get it off. But uh, let me take that off and uh, take it from there. Uh, the next thing we'll take off is we want to take the this bolt plug off the back. Um, it's threaded in the receiver. It does give you a lot of safety uh, margin in case the locking lug shear, in case the bolt handle shears. It still has to go through, uh, you still have to knock this plug before stuff ends up in your face. Uh, next thing now is to take that uh, sear off. Get some wire up here. So you can see uh, this part here just screws, unscrews it out. This, this goes directly to the firing pin inside the bolt. Take that out. Threads in there like that. Now the bolt can be raised up. The bolt handle just unscrews. Bolt handle got a little knurled in there. And the, oh, it's fighting it a little bit. And the bolt comes right out. So in the bolt you can see there's two locking lugs uh, up front, and I made this obviously with a lathe and then a mill, uh, and then a lot of filing to shape those lugs, clean them off a little bit. Uh, you can see the extractor. Uh, let's finish taking the uh, receiver apart. We'll come back to the bolt. Well, actually, the receiver is taken apart. There's nothing else left in it. Uh, just get you a good close up of how this how this worked. Uh, you know, the receiver tube. I drilled through this side, then drilled and uh, cut my threads in over there and reamed it all in. Of course, I left this center portion for my locking lugs. And then went in there, went in there with the end mill to cut out that slot. And that gives you uh, two locking surfaces and really two open surfaces, the lock, top lugs just free outside the uh, ejection port there. So that, that's how that receiver's made. It's not very complicated, but... You know, I, I, I don't have a whole machine shop. This is just a, a lathe and a mill. So, uh, again, shows you how that works. And the, the, we're going back to the bolt. Again, you can see where the locking lugs lock in the receiver there. Uh, I'll take the uh, extractor out here. A little 1 16th inch uh, pin holds that in. Pretty much just had to hand shape that extractor. I'll knock that out real quick. Um, now that that's out, I can show that to you. Um, you see how that works. It's just a simple hook style extractor with a pin and a spring to put, you know, tension on the back. Uh, the bolt, there's one set screw right here and I keep the firing pin inside it. Um, let me take this out here. And it should just knock on out. There you go. So there's the empty bolt. You can see the sear ramp here. Um, this is what, uh, of course, the sear screws in right here. Uh, it would be screwed in all the way. And it rides in that track right there. So when you open the gun, again, there's a track down here for the sear. So when it's closed, it's all the way like this. And it can go all the way forward. When, the, when you open the bolt, it open, unlocks it and uh, it can't go off because uh, you know it, this this track of the receiver right here uh, keeps it um, 
at this position so the fire man can't go forward. So it's an out of battery, out of battery circuitry along with a, a cock on open. Um, the firing pin, like so not a lot to it here. Just a washer, that, that set screw uh, will go in this hole right here so when you cock it, it, it puts all the spring tension. So that's where you get all the, all the momentum for your firing pin right there. Clean that off. Um, I mean, I could take it apart, but you see how it's, it's threaded right there. It just comes off in your spring and that little, little washer back here um, holds the tension. Um, as for the, the uh, trigger here, I mean, uh, you can see the sear, it's just, it's just a catch. Um, you just need to let this part go and drop and it will shoot. And that's really all the trigger is. It's a simple just hook right here. This is not a drop safety uh, a trigger design at all. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't make this trigger design anymore. I've, I've made some different ones since that I like better. Um, take it apart, there's two screws here. There is a little um, spring right here and a little detent. Uh, look at that. That will fit in a hole in the receiver up here. Let's see that. Uh, right there. And that'll help keep uh, the bolt uh, locked in that little detent. You see where it rides and it'll get right there and help help hold the, the bolt shut. Um, just so the gun was upside down, it wouldn't, you know, bolt wouldn't fly open. Um, well, let me knock these pins out and show you how it works. Uh, so here's just the spring. Not a lot to it. There's two pins. Uh, one to um, hold the pivot pin in. There's another one up here. Uh, there's a set screen here so you can set the height of you know where you want your trigger to be at rest and one spring on it. Um, like I said, not a lot here. There's some lock tight in screws and how I made the trigger um, here. I wouldn't plan on ever taking that back apart. I think there's a lock tight it in. Um, and the trigger housing, pretty simple. There is a little, I guess a witness hole right here so you could see the sear and the trigger line up. And when I put it back together, I'll let you look through there. See how everything lines up. Could have blued it better. This is, like I said, I made this gun several years ago. I think the blue is 4440. Um, I think it's a 4440 gel. I think Brownells used to sell it. I can't find it anymore. Um, but it did, it did work pretty good. Most of my guns I use that stuff on. But uh, anyways, I think that's all the parts. Uh, like I said, pretty simple design. Um, I think you saw how it worked. I will um, I'm gonna put it together. I'll try to demo how it works a little better. You know, guys, it hit me that I hadn't actually showed anyone the cartridge. Uh, and that's a six millimeter 223. It is a 223. Hit stamp case. Uh, just run it through the die, and it'll. I mean, it's, it's uh, 243, you know, versus a 223 diameter bullet. So, not a lot of expansion. And then you just see the six millimeter bullet in there. So, I don't know if anybody makes factory ammo. It's probably pretty rare if they do, but it's just easy to make your brass from 223 brass. So, uh, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the trigger the uh, trigger guard back together. Again, you can see this part just. It's down in there. And we'll put in those two pins, and again, that this top pin just sets the depth of the, with that set screw. Uh, next, I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, extractor back in. You see the little cutout. Um, again, just had to make that extractor by hand, just filing and drilling in a little 16th inch hole. Uh, it was a bugger to put together, but. Be surprised what you can do with a file. Put that back together. Yeah, there's a little spring right here uh, that gives it tension on the back. Now with the uh, extractor in place, you can see it's under. Put the spring back in the back right here. Um, you'll see how it works. It's it doesn't get any simpler than that when you when you seat the bullet. Uh, it grabs the brass, and of course you're through your own ejector. So you reach in and just pull it out. Next, I'll put the firing pin back in um, the bolt body. Make sure you get that in focus. Um, it's that little screw that goes in here. We'll grab that that washer right there. And that keeps that part steady and when the firing pin comes back it puts tension. So it is a little tedious to line up. I did mark where to put the sear. Right. 
I guess I'm calling out the sear that you drill it, that you set up into here. But uh, yeah, you see the, try to get it in focus again. But that little screw has to line up in that little hole right there. But uh, let me do that and get back with you. So I got that back in there. And you can see uh, when, uh, when you close the bolt, sorry, when you oak cock on open, it has to, the sear will ride in that, in that rail back here. In there and it will twist on this ramp right here and come out um I, there, i've had trouble with this gun in the past like if i use bench rest primers they don't work well uh so i this is probably the last one that i've done this kind of design on most of them i do now with a spray in the back it just just i think you just get better results so now we can put the bolt back in the gun here Little resistive in there, line up the locking lugs. Uh, put the bolt handle in next. It just screws on. Uh, like I said I would probably do a set screw if I was going to build a gun today. Sometimes it backs out, you got to retighten it. You see how it rides in there, pretty, very nice. Um, and we can go ahead and put the end cap on here. And that's more of a safety precaution. I did uh, do all the math on. Um, you know, on those locking lugs, so and it has held up. I bet I put a thousand rounds with this gun. Um, but I do know this is, I think, I, I don't want to tell you the exact steel because I don't know offhand, but it does, it has an ultimate yield strength of about 125,000 psi. Uh, I picked it on, I picked it by you know, by this height. So, um, like I said, I, I did crunch all the math. If y'all are really interested in the math, I could, I could go over that maybe in a video, but um. Pretty pretty durable action. Uh, late late later models, I've probably changed the dimensions of the locking lugs, uh, and I do occasionally check these guns to make sure they're still in headspace. Is something bending? Obviously, you can check it for metal fatigue, any sort of cracking. Um, uh, of course, you know if your if your brass is stretching or your primers are look funny. Um, lots of things you can look for, but uh, so now I'm going to put the the I guess the sear back in. Turn it upside down. That screws in again. I, future guns, I would use a set screw on this, just because you don't want it backing out or twisting in there. I think there it is, locked in pretty nice. Um, but let me see if I can get a little better view here. But when you cock it, you see it starts to back up as soon as I start raising the handle. Um, of course, that's bringing that fire pin back under tension. You will work the bolt when you come forward. You know it wants to, it, it, you know it wants to come back, but that hook in here, right there, will catch it, and that's uh, pretty simple. That's how that works. Um, but let me put the detent in there. A little detent spring. I remember this is a little tedious to mount in here. I don't think I lined it up just right, but it fits in there. But let me get the trigger group on there, and I'll show you through this little witness witness hole how, how that part works. And now that I got the trigger group on there, see if I can, you can see in that little witness hole right there. Um, that little shiny part's just sear. And uh, there's the hook for the, oh, camera's twisted. Hook for the trigger, so. I can get it to hold still here. I'm gonna pull the trigger, and you can see that you'll see the little hook part drop. And there it went, boom. The cock it is it, it actually will cock all the way on just by raising the handle. But you would extract, you know, you would put it around in there, close it. And there you go. See the little sear in the hook? Uh that little D10 I showed you, you know it. it it catches about right there, so it's tough to do. Um, you know, it catches in that bolt to help help keep it down. But anyways, well, let's put her back in the stock. All right, so I got the uh, stock back in. Probably gonna lose focus here, but you just drop it on. I didn't glass bead anything, or glass bed anything. 
Um, but let me just tighten up the screw. I don't think y'all can see it. Maybe you can. Let me raise that up a little bit. I'll have to show it to you. There's the screw right there. Um, like I said, just one screw. Hand side, probably should have used two. Anyways, guys, there it is. Uh, put back together. It's my 6 millimeter 223. Uh, I built, uh, man, I've probably built 16 or 17 homemade guns. If if uh, enough people want to see them, I'll gladly make more videos. Uh, it's, a, it's a fun hobby. Uh, but thanks for watching. Appreciate it.